I think it was last week. You hit me up. You was like, "Hey man, you seen the new Springfield Echelon?" Yeah. I said, "Yeah." I said, "You said you gonna get it?" Hell no! I'm not buying that new gun. I'm not buying no more new guns from Springfield. It ain't, it ain't happening. That gun got it's got to be like a year old before I buy it. I ain't buying nothing new from Springfield. I just. Here we go. What's up? What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I got a special episode of Gun Talk. Um, talk about all kind of stuff today. It's not just me by myself. I got my guy here, Mr. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> and we just gonna have a conversation about some gun stuff, man. So um, I guess I want to say you're not new to shooting. You've been shooting for a while, and I'm kind of just figuring out like how did we start talking about guns, you know? What, how did that even come about? How did that even happen? Oh, uh, man, I don't remember. So I, I, I think I was walking by your office or something. Somebody was telling me that you were in the gun. So I walked by your office and I decided to come in. I was like, hey, I'm going to the range, uh, you know, Saturday. And I was like, hey, you should come out. And, um, you know, and then we start talking about, for some reason, you asked me, oh, am I a Glock guy, SIG guy, whatever, right? Yeah, Team SIG. So I was like, oh, I like Glocks because that's all I knew at the time, right? Yeah. And so you put this little whiteboard up in your room, you start drawing, and this is what a Glock trigger looks like, and this is the inside, and then we kind of just we kind of just went from there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah. Very interesting. So, like, whenever, whenever someone's talked to me about guns, man, I just get mad excited, man. Yeah, and I could tell. <laughs> And it's crazy because like some people know a lot about guns and some people kind of don't, but um, I kind of feel like a mixed way about it. To me, I'm just like, I'm just the information person. I just want more information. I'm always wanting to learn. I love shooting. So you was like, hey, let's get to the range. And then we start talking about Glocks because like I said, I'm, I'm really a SIG fanboy, but I yeah. shoot just about everything. Yeah. And I think once we had went to the range and we started shooting, uh, I had one of my custom Glocks out there. And you was talking about like, man, I really want a <laughs> yeah. custom Glock. So yeah. I basically was like, dude, if you want to build a Glock, I mean, we could build one. You get the parts, kind of tell me what you're looking for, what's your budget, and then we can go from there. And then we, we built your Glock, yeah. you know? That was uh, November of 2022. Yeah. Man, it's almost coming up on a year already. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you hadn't, because that day you had a flight. I think you were flying to Vegas or something like that. And you was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. So if you had never came, man, we would have never been to where we are today. You That's know? dope, man. Yeah. So when we built your Glock, we went with the Glock 19 platform. Mm -hmm. Kind of talk me through that build. So um, first we had to find a slide. It was like, oh, you know, there's this company called Zafiri, whatever. So we uh, we end up going with Safiri. We're looking at them. I'm sitting. In, we're sitting in your office, and we're going through the different types of slides. And uh, he's like, "Oh, do you like window cuts?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, what does that even mean? You know?" <laughs> or as a visual thing, you know, what do you like aesthetically uh, pleasing or whatever? And then he's like, "Well, you know, I'm a big fan of of ported guns." And then we got the ported the ported barrel on there. Um, we found a red dot. Man, it it was it was a process. Man. Um, and then we found, we went through the trigger. He's like, oh, well, you know, I really like this brand of trigger, you know, this does this and this helps with this. And it was, it was a lot of information, bro. Like, and it was like a squirrel because you were all over the place telling me all these different things. And then, um, you know, I just trust your judgment to help me build a gun that was going to work for me. And um, so, yeah, we end up going with the edge connector on it, the Ghost, mm -hmm. uh, AGC Arms trigger. Um, yeah, and I, I think we we polish we we polish stuff for like an hour, and I'm like, what does this even mean? You know, we're polishing all this stuff, and yeah, it was a lot, but it, it was a dope experience. And since then, I think I built like four other guns. Dang, yeah, man. four in a year. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> bought like seven since I met you. It's been crazy, man. It's been crazy, man. The thing that's crazy too about the Glock is like, like I said, I personally love a Sig gun, but. As a first gun, I really recommend a Glock to anybody. I yeah. think the Glock 19 is the perfect platform, and I think it's a gun that's very scalable. Mm -hmm. You could have a $500 Glock, you can have a $3,000 Glock. It's, it's pretty much endless, and I yeah. think that's kind of like, that's the kind of path I was kind of going down with you, talk to you about all the different types of customizations. And mm -hmm. that's why, when I'm talking to people and they tell me they don't like Glock for whatever reason, I'm just like, man, I, I don't know how someone could not like a Glock because... You can literally make a Glock the way you want it. Yeah. If you don't like the grip, you can change the grip. Yeah. You know, if if you don't like the grip angle, you can get a different frame, change the grip angle. You know, you don't like the trigger. There's like, t 
to me, the Glock, the Glock is like the Honda Civic of yeah. the gun community. Yeah. There's, there's a little bit of something for everybody, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. So I thought that was really dope how that all came together. So we went with the Safiri slide, mm -hmm. and you're ported now. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on ported guns? So at the time, I had never had any experience with ported guns. And then, uh, you know, we shot a few, and it's, I think I like ported over comp. I think I like ported over comp. But I will say that I shot it in the indoor range the other day, and it, it, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's super, I don't know, you could feel it. Like, yeah. you could feel... Yeah, so but uh, it's that's I like it, man. And probably every gun that I ever buy from now is gonna I'm gonna either port it or I'm gonna comp it. Listen, that's and that's a touchy subject for people. When I'm talking to folks, I love ported guns. Yeah. I might have I don't know, I might have like eight ported guns. It's it's almost like it's consuming me. And I've shot ported, I shot comped, I've shot island comp, and I recently built a Glock and it's ported and comped. It's like yeah. a little bit of both. Um but it's something about a ported gun. I mean, it just, it just, it just recoils differently. It's just a totally different experience. I love the way a ported gun shoots. It's just super dope, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree with you, man. It's a lot smoother. Um, like I said, I had no idea what ported even was before you, you know, you introduced me to it. So, shooting a gun that's not ported is you, you could feel the difference now. Definitely. I can feel the difference now because at some point it was like, oh, I don't know. I, like sometimes you'll ask me questions about shooting or about porter or about compensating and I'd be like, eh, I can't really feel a difference, a total difference. But now that I've been shooting that gun for like the last almost a year, mm -hmm. I can tell a difference when I shoot a gun that's not ported now. Definitely. I, I agree too. And then sometimes I'm talking to people about that and they'll say like, can you not handle the recoil of a regular gun? And I'm like, it has nothing to do with whether you can handle the recoil or not. I think it's just like preference on how you how you like it to feel. Yeah. Or even kind of like, you know, I know we talk about guns and stuff, and I know you got a fully built custom Mustang. When mm. I talk to people about suspension, there's mm. a difference between having like a lowered suspension, having a lowered suspension with springs, and then having like a coilover system with a tuned shock that fits that, a tuned spring that fits that shock, mm -hmm. and the whole system kind of works in harmony. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about a comp gun. When you have a comp gun, you build it the way you want, it's, it's like that whole system that works, that works in harmony. It just, I don't know, man, it just runs, man. Yeah. People that, that are not shooting comp, it's kind of hard to explain if, you, if you're not shooting it because you don't really know. Yeah. But it's definitely a, a very enjoyable experience. I mean, it's to the point now, I think the primary guns that I love shooting are all comp. Even my carry gun is freaking comp. Oh, man. yeah. I mean, well, port it, port it in comp. So yeah. it's like, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get away from that, man. Yeah, me either, man. It's it's stamped now. <laughs> it's stamped. So along with gun bills, right? That's how kind of how, how this how this gun relationship started. And then we were just talking about shooting in general, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you asked me. You was like, "Hey, um, do you ever do any shooting and moving?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I, I do that, but I don't really do too much of it because before I was in Georgia, I was in Texas." And for me, I thought Texas was just crushing it as yeah. far as like the, the shooting and moving, the USPSA stuff. And I didn't really know how much of it, how much of folks was doing that out here in Augusta, right? Mm -hmm. And I was here before back in 2015. And I think from 2015 to 2023, the gun community has shifted like drastically. And I just didn't, I kind of thought it had died out. So I had kind of brought it up to you. And I told you like when I was registering for these matches, I was using practice score and I'd find a match and all that other stuff. And then you hit me up one day. You was like, hey, man, they're shooting a USPSA match. You want to go? And I was like, cool, let's go. But now, man, I think the USPSA scene in Augusta is crushing Texas, man. Yeah. As far as like the That's layout of the state. That's a man. A lot of people are going to be mad about that. So <laughs> Texas? Well, man, it's kind of weird because like... I'm team Texas and I'm team Georgia, right? Okay. And then when I think of, and I tell people, people ask me if I like country stuff. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, yeah, I like country. I listen to country music. And I tell them there's two types of country. You got Texas country mm -hmm. and you got Georgia country. And yeah. it's like, if you haven't been to either, it's just a little bit different. And I kind of feel the same way about the gun community too. The, the Georgia gun community and the Texas gun community, they're both different. Yeah. Is one better than the other? I wouldn't say it's necessarily better. It's just it's just different. Mm -hmm. You know? But the USPSA scene here, man, it is the stages are way more thought out. It's mm -hmm. way more thorough. It's it's freaking insane, man. And I know I kind of got you going 
with the USPSA stuff. Like, mm -hmm. how was it coming into the USPSA scene? I was nervous, man. <laughs> um, I will say, going into it, when, like, before it actually happened, I felt good about it, right? And then I get to the safety brief, and they're telling me all these different things. And subconsciously, if you shoot a lot or you shoot in general, these are things that are kind of already built into you, mm -hmm. right? But when they were saying certain things, I kind of just was like, Oh, I hope I remember that, or like, don't break the 180 rule, or do this, or do that. So it was kind of like, it just made me nervous that these were things that I already knew, but the way that they reiterated kind of made me self-conscious about it, you know what I'm saying? Um, so after the safety brief, we went into that first stage, and I think we went into like stage four first, so it was a lot more complicated than, uh, you know, <clears throat> than stage one. But we had walked through all the stages, you told me, you know, oh, don't shoot this, shoot this, and or how I would approach each stage and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a lot, man. And I, I, I look back at the videos, because when I first seen the video of me shooting, I was like, oh, man, that's good, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then now I look back at it, and I'm like, oh, so I'm moving in slow motion. But it, it feels good to have done that, though. Yeah. Um, and I can look back at it and see where I need to improve, how I need to move. Um, just being more comfortable. That's that's what it comes down to for me. It wasn't my ability. It was just, was I comfortable? You know? Yeah. That's... It's funny that you say you feel like you was moving in slow motion. And that's kind of like, that's my advice to anybody. Because like, if someone telling me they want to get into shooting matches, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to go to the range with them initially just to make sure they got some of the basics down. And when I went to go shoot with you, I could already tell you, you already had the gun discipline down. It was just putting the shooting and moving all together. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation to anyone that's first shooting a match is just take it slow. Yeah. Just worry right. about gun safety, not breaking any of the rules. Like you said, the 180 rule, everything. Just kind of walk through the stages, shoot the stages. And once you kind of get used to how it's going, mm -hmm. the speed will come and everything else will be just become a little more familiar. Uh, but the first time I'd say... Just focus on what they're telling you. Take all commands from the tower and just, you know, just take your time and go through the stages, you know. And when I'm talking to people about shooting and moving, you're one of the only people that we had like a, like a brief conversation about it and then we was doing it. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm I, I ready. talked to so many people about shooting and moving and like it, it, it kills me so many people that don't want to shoot and move. Yeah. And it's like, this may be like an unpopular opinion, but... In my opinion, if you're an individual, you're carrying a gun, and you're out in the wild, and you don't want to shoot a USPSA match, or you don't want to shoot a steel match because of you're kind of scared of it, mm -hmm. in my opinion, you shouldn't be carrying a gun. Yeah. I'm like, if you don't have enough confidence in your gun to just take it to a match and shoot, I'm not saying you're going to go out there and win, mm -hmm. but just to go out there and shoot, and you're just like, oh, no, I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. You know, I'm not ready there. Mm -hmm. To me... I don't think you have enough trust in your equipment and you should not be carrying that gun out there in the wild. That's just, that's just my take on it, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. And then also I think it's like, too, it's, it's good to see what your equipment can actually do. Yeah, because I had a lot of issues, mag drops, mag wasn't seating uh, properly, a whole lot of stuff that, that first match that we did. So it was good to see, you know, in a practice scenario versus, you know, in the real world where it could actually, you know, cost me something you know definitely and it's it's different there's a huge difference between shooting inside and shooting outside and i love all shooting like sometimes people are like man i don't know how you go to the indoor range and i'm like when i go to the indoor range i try to work on something whatever mm -hmm. that something is even if i'm at a range and they say hey man you can't draw from a holster i still work on reloads you know i still work on being able to pick that gun up get a good grip presenting the gun you know and I'll probably work it on shot group or shot placement or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But shooting inside and then shooting outside, man, it's just like a night and day difference. And I would say the biggest difference is, um, for one, the environment, because everything is open. You got a different level of awareness. Lighting is totally different oh, yeah. as far as like what, what kind of eyes you're wearing, whether they're tinted, the type of how, how well your eyewear is. And then also how where your equipment is. Mm -hmm. Because I've shot, I'm a red dot shooter. And I got probably, I don't even know how many red dots I got or how many different brands I went through. Mm -hmm. And when I first started shooting, I was using a lot of the budget red dots. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with them if you're just going to the range and casually shooting inside. Right. But if you're outside and you're shooting and moving, 
that's when you're going to notice this budget red dot is not, yeah. it's not where it's at. You learn that real quick. And I didn't understand that like when I first started getting into shooting outside and shooting and moving because I was talking you know, a couple of my buddies who was into that getting me into it. And they're like, hey, man, you got to get you a quality red dot. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I think this is, like, I got this off eBay, man. And it's like, you know, 30 bucks. It's like, you know, that's not it. But then when I went out there and started, I was like, dang, I can't see the dot. Did it turn off? You know, I'm shaking the gun and stuff. I'm like, that's when I knew, like, quality, quality red dots is, it's huge, man, yeah. when it's out there shooting and moving, you yeah, know? Yeah, you definitely told me, don't go cheap, man. Don't, don't buy a cheap red dot. Yeah. And it's one of the things, you know, uh, Buy once, cry once. Yeah. You know? And still you start buying like seven guns a year, then it's totally different. <laughs> hey, you be buying a couple more things. But um, you know what? And speaking of red dots, out of the dots that you've been using and the dots that you've owned, what do you like the best? Mm. Right now, my Trigicon SRO. That's a badass That's dot. A, yeah, and it has a really big window. So do you know which MOA you got? I got the 2.5. 2.5? Yep. I think that's the one I would probably get too. It's something about that. I don't know. It's really clean to yeah. me. Um, and another thing that was that's been interesting too, shooting a lot of USPSA stuff out here in Georgia, and you know, talking to a lot of people and seeing the, like the different setups they're running. A lot of people have been running. I want to say it's like a, it's a Seymour Red Dot, and I want to say it's like an eight MOA, which is crazy to me. That sounds like it'd just be too big, but it's yeah. actually. When you're presenting the gun and looking at it, the dot, is very clean. Mm -hmm. It's very clean, and the 8 MOA, man, you pick it up very fast. And I'm familiar with Seymour dots, but I'm more, I'm used to seeing those on like, you know, pistol caliber carbines and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm not used to seeing a lot of people running them on handguns. But out here in Georgia, I see them all the time. A lot of people are putting them on them, uh, them CZ shadows. They're running that Seymour dot in like an 8 MOA, and I'm like, I'm interested in that dot. I, I kind of don't want to buy it because if I buy it, I don't have nothing to put it on. And then I'm going to buy another gun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to be buying another gun right now. But that Seymour 8 MOA, I'm, I'm interested in that dot. But that, that Trigicon SRO, that's a bad you dot, you interested man. in that over the, the new Holosun? Man, that new Holosun. That thing is nice. It's nice. So were you, were you with me that day when yeah. we shot? So the, the new Holosun, when it came out, I heard about it. I was interested about it, but it's one of the things you kind of don't know until you see. Right. And when we were shooting that match that day, you know, I'm standing behind the guy and I'm waiting for him to shoot. He presents his gun. I'm like, damn, that dot is huge. <laughs> what is that? And then, you know, we, after he gets that shoot, I say, what is it? He's like, man, that's the new Hollow Sun. And I was like, yo, that thing is dope. Yeah. And I really wasn't a fan of green reticles mm -hmm. for a while because they, when they started popping off, you know, I had, I had bought one and I didn't really like it and I got rid of it. But the large, I, I want to say it's the Hollow Sun Comp, mm -hmm. and he had the green dot, and that thing looked amazing, yeah, man. Crisp. That thing looked amazing. I was like, so if you're asking me, do I want the, the Trigicon SRO or the Hollow Sun Comp, I guess it depends on the platform that I'm going to put it on. Okay. Would determine. But, I, I, man, I really don't think you can go wrong with, with either, either one. Prodigy. <laughs> Throw it on the Prodigy. <laughs> so you have your SRO on the Prodigy. Yes. Man, you know the Prodigy is such a touchy subject, man. Yeah. It's such a... It's... I don't know what made me get the gun, right? Because <laughs> I went to the range with you when, you when you first got it. And you took it out. And uh, yeah, we know. We seen the videos. Problematic. Right? <laughs> we, seen the, we seen the videos. And I don't know what drew me to that, to that gun, right? And uh, so I ended up buying it, and I took it to the range, and it worked. It worked. Flawless. It ran perfect. 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 <laughs> right. And then, um, yeah, that that gun is it's amazing, man. It's super smooth. So, those of you that's been following me, you can go back and look at my prodigy journey. It has been extensive. I will say this. Out of every gun I've owned, out of every gun, device, red dot, flashlight, out of everything I've owned, the Prodigy has been the most problematic, hands down. It has been the most time consuming. It has been the biggest learning curve. It has, this, I went through everything with this dang on Prodigy. Right now as it stands, my Prodigy runs great. It's, it's, it's a beast 
of a gun now. But for me to get there, man, the prodigy just, it, it just makes me feel a certain type of way, man. And it's crazy because I think it was last week you hit me up. You was like, hey, man, you seen that new Springfield Echelon? Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, you, like, you going to get it? Hell no, I'm not buying that new gun. I'm not buying no more new guns from Springfield. <laughs> Ain't happening. That gun got it's got to be like a year old before I buy it. I ain't buying nothing new for Springfield. I just <laughs> I'm not going down that road again, man. But the prodigy now is um I would say this: if someone is interested in buying a prodigy, I would recommend it. I would recommend it, and I would hope that their experience is, is like yours, because like you said, you got yours and it ran yeah right out the box, man. And with the SR on there, phew, man. Yeah, like I told you, like it. It helps me with like my shooting. Like you remember, you tell me, oh, I pick up the was it your two two six two nine? Yeah. He's like, that's the gun that you shoot the best. You feel like you shoot the best, right? It, for some reason, I probably when I shoot it, I just, I just, I shoot it very well. Yeah, it you just do. feels good in my hand. Um, the trigger is nice, and it's a stock trigger, so I feel like you know if I shoot it well, why not run it? Yeah, definitely. And I think the last time we shot. The last steel match we shot, you was running something different. And it wasn't that you weren't doing bad. You just do so much better with the Prodigy. And mm -hmm. I want to say there were six stages. I want to say like mid-stage. Like after like stage three, mm -hmm. you switched to the Prodigy and you was just running, man. Yeah, like butter. Man, that dang on Prodigy is... is it's a bad gun, man. I, it's, it's a badass gun. I, I would recommend it. Um, I think Springfield's got it pretty much worked out. I still see a bunch of mixed stuff out mm -hmm. there on YouTube and the gun community. And I run into guys all the time. Whenever they see it, they're, oh, man, ask me all these questions about it. And it's kind of mixed. But for the price point, getting into that 2011 platform, I, I honestly just don't think you can, you can't go wrong with it. You can't go wrong with it. Nah. So also coming into the shooting world, right, you're a lefty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I remember when we were first talking about, like, gear, getting a holster, you know, I'm kind of showing you some stuff and I'm showing you different like loadouts and layouts and, you know, I'm a righty. Mm -hmm. Getting your equipment together, was that challenging like as a lefty or? Um, I mean, it wasn't that bad. It's just more so like, all right, you know, usually when you, when you buy something, you want to test it out first, right? So if you recommend something, I want to try it out. But being that you're right-handed, I can only do so much with your stuff and it still won't feel the same because I'm, I'm left-handed. So that was kind of challenging, you know, uh, when I started off with that Glock 19, just to, to talk about that real quick. Um, releasing the mag and um, yeah. slide release was kind of difficult because, uh, because I'm a lefty. Um, but when, when we talk about the gear and stuff, mm -hmm. I feel like I started to get more comfortable and with the gear, but... It, it's, I mean, I don't know, man. It's kind of like, I tried your stuff. It works. Now let me go buy it and see how it works for me. Yeah. Um, everything is, everything worked, though. The the, the holster that I end up getting is supposed to be like a universal holster. Mm -hmm. And it's working for the moment. So mm -hmm. I can't complain about the gear. So it's right now, I wish, I wish I could be like, oh, let me borrow this. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? To just see how just it see works how it for is. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So what, what gear are you running? Like what belt are you running? What holster are you running? Uh, right now I have the Safe Life Defense. Safe Life Defense. Uh, I got the, was it S-Tech mag pouches? Mm -hmm. The S-Tech. Um, whoever makes that omnivore holster. I think it's a Black Hawk. Black Hawk? I want to say I want to say it's a Black Hawk. When I find it, I'll I'll throw yeah, it up on the screen. That's, I think that's who makes it. So I have that Black Hawk, um, and then I you know I got the leg leash and stuff like that. But yeah, that, that, I think that's the whole loadout. Cause you also have the you also have a Safari Land. Yes, that's what I was running for the Glock 19, correct? How do you like? And, and I want to say the name of your holster, the Black Hawk one, is the Omnivore. Yes. Um, and a lot of times people hear Black Hawk. And they just automatically get turned off on it. But the Omnivore is a pretty solid holster. I used yeah. to run that before. And one of the things I used to like about it was it gets retention on the light. Mm -hmm. And I was using the Streamlight uh, TR, TLR, I want to say. Uh, that was the light I was using. And running different guns, that holster really works for that platform, right? Mm -hmm. So running the Omnivore versus running the Safari Land, 
Do you have a preference which one you like better? No, nah, I mean, I don't think I have a preference. It feels the same to me. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm that much of a critique type person to notice a difference. Mm-hmm. It it feels the same to me. Okay. Um, you know, it has a the button release right to pull it out of the holster. <clears throat> I will say the Black Hawk, the the one that it comes with is kind of. It's not. It doesn't work for me. So, but they have an adapter that extends the uh, button release, and it worked out very well for me. But the Safari and straight out the box, it it worked. I had no issues with the releasing of the weapon. Definitely. So, and I agree with you on the omnivore. I know. I want to say it's different, either lengths or heights yeah. of the buttons. Yeah. And when I first got it, because I had the same one, and I had bought it years ago, and I was running it. I was having the same thing. It was like my, I guess my thumb was too short to mm-hmm. push the button. And I think I ended up going with, if there's three sizes, whatever is the max size, mm-hmm. that's the one I put on there. Same. And once I put that on there, I was, I was running. Golden. It was smoothing. Yeah. yeah. It was smoothing. It was smooth running that, that holster. Um, so between like the Omnivore and the um, Safari Land, there's another brand out, right? Alien Gear has their Rapid Force. Have you seen that? No, nah, I haven't seen it. Man, I'll throw a picture of it up on the screen. But um, are, are y'all running this this holster, this Alien Gear Rapid Force system? It's the people that I have talked to that are running it, comparing it to Safari Land. They say it doesn't even compare. They said it's crushing Safari Land. And I want to say I was looking at one for a Sig, of course, right? I would want to say I seen it on Amazon. It was probably like hundred sixty bucks or something like that. But out of like level two, level three holsters, that is the next holster I'm going to get. I'm very interested in that rapid force system. It's like, I don't know, if, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it, I would just say just look it up and check it out. But I think it's, I pre, I think it's pretty dope. And if you want to look it up and see somebody run it, uh, Mil Spec Mojo. I don't know if you've ever seen this dude shoot. Nah. In freaking sane. <laughs> In freaking say, I want to say if I'm if I'm five six, he might be like five six. He'll be the top, and he just he runs yeah. the gun. Yeah. yeah, I might just put a clip on him of him shooting. Um. All right. So speaking of mil spec mojo, and you know, looking at if somebody wants to find you, where where are you at in the in the in the media space, man? I'm just on Instagram right now, man. My Instagram is KGB Reloaded. He'll post it right here. Right up. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah. I'm just on Instagram right now. You know, I'm on YouTube, but I don't post anything. I just comment on your videos. <laughs> <laughs> but that works too. I'll throw my I'll throw my gun Instagram up there too, because I got a bunch of different Instagrams. Uh, and mine is uh, E the Comms Guy. I almost forgot what it was because I, re- I I'll be posting on there like this. I got so many of them, but I'll throw my IG handle up there too, right? So we've been talking about pretty much a little bit of everything, man. We talking about the prodigy, talking about some shooting and moving, how we got into shooting, custom builds. And I guess kind of like going on the lines of custom builds, and you said you bought like seven guns in the last year. Yeah. What's an interesting pickup for you? What's an interesting gun that you done bought? Spread the comp, hands down. Ooh. Yeah, man. That's, I, a, that's a badass gun. Yeah, so I found it. Well. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> you found it. On guns.com. And you sent it to me. It was like, man, look at this gun. Check it out. Wah, wah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that is a nice gun. <laughs> and... uh and then I think I text you like, oh, man, somebody bought the Spread the Comp, man. <laughs> I was going to get it. And, uh, yeah, and I think I ended up just bringing it out to the range, and then you, and, then, and that's when you saw it or whatever. Um, but, yeah, that gun, it's amazing. man. so the first 320 platform I shot was yours, right, the mm-hmm. one with the yellow trigger? Yeah. I shot that one. I was like, oh, yeah, I shoot this very well, right? And then that's when I, uh, <clears throat> you know, I ended up getting that Spread the Comp, which is a 320 platform as well. Um you got a crazy deal on that. How much yeah. you pay for that gun? I think I paid like thirteen hundred. Wow, because like you said, I, I found that gun. I don't know what I was doing. I was just you know in the black hole of the internet and yeah. then looking up stuff, and then it popped up and it was like Spectre Comp for sale, thirteen hundred bucks. I was like, dang! And it was it was everything. It yeah. was the gun. It Loaded. was the dot. Had the uh, Surefire X three hundred on. I was like, man, yeah, that's a great deal. And I was man, I was itching to get it. I was like. Shoot, let me shoot this to Ken and see what he think about it. And then the next, it was like the next week, I was like, man, somebody bought the gun the cop. You didn't bought the dang on gun, didn't even tell me we go to rage. You like, bam, I'm like, oh, stop, we done bought this better cop. So once I found out that you bought it, I was like, okay, cool, I know it went to a good home, you know, and if I want to shoot it, I got access to it. Exactly. So, but yeah, that Spectre comp, man, it's, there's been so much hype about that gun 
on the internet. But I will say, it, to me, it's not a hype thing. The yeah. gun shoots amazing. It's yeah. very aesthetically pleasing. I think the only con for me with that gun is um, I'm, I'm a front racker. You know, I mm -hmm. grab the front of the gun. The slide is very slick. Mm -hmm. it, it's extremely slick. Even with the serrations that's on it, it looks pretty aggressive. It looks like it's easy to grip, but, it, man, it's, it's very slick. And, like, when I was shooting the gun, handling it, and manipulating it, I was worried that my hand would get caught between the slide and the comp. Yeah. Just because how how slick it was. That's probably one of the probably one of the more slicker guns that I've handled. And I don't, I don't know why Sig did that, but um, you know what? One of the things I think would be interesting. You got a guy that does laser laser engraving. Yeah. I wonder if he could like laser stemple some type of texture. On the front of that slide. That might not be a bad idea. That would be interesting. And that might just be just enough enough grip to kind of rough it up. Yeah. Hmm. Because I did the same thing. I started, since I seen you do it, I started racking from the front too as well. <laughs> and I did it a couple of times with that with that gun. I, I got a you know finger a bite yeah. from the slide. Um but it shoots amazing, man. Amazing. It's super smooth, super flat. Um, you were telling me there was a thing about the trigger that was difference between the the 320 that you have and the one that I have with the trigger that you didn't. So the trigger that's in the Spectre comp, I forget which trigger it is, but it's it's one that's it, it's a definitely a custom trigger that's in there or a modified trigger mm -hmm. because my 320 platforms, mine are old, they're ancient, right? Mm -hmm. So my main my full size 320 is a 320RX. Now when people see it. They think it's a Legion and all this other stuff because over the years, every time something new came out, I just got the new thing, you know? Mm. So I got the, um, the tungsten infused grip on there. I got a Grey Guns trigger kit in there. I didn't, you know, cut the slide. It's ported. Um, I think I got like a 1911, I want to say it's like 11 or 12 pound spring in there. So it's, it looks totally different, but it, it's really just regular SIG RX that has just transformed to that. And then like my other 320 i have a 320 tac ops and that gun just looks it just looks crazy because the slide's fully polished mm -hmm. the trigger's polished and the trigger's polished inside and out gray guns kit it's just a completely custom gun but i feel like the specter comp man that trigger's just nice out the box you don't even have to do anything to it yeah. i mean i would say all you gotta do is put a dot on it and add a light but yours already came with the dot so <laughs> yeah. you literally didn't have to do nothing with it i say just buy some extra mags yeah and then just run and that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. But that is definitely an interesting piece right there. A hundred percent. What about you? What What's your most interesting gun right now? If you had to choose, because I know you got... You, it's hard I got a couple choose. things. Um, Most interesting? I would say the most interesting, because I think there's a gun that some people don't know about or they're mm. unaware of, and then the way I have it set up, I have a Glock 17L. Mm. Fully custom. And the thing that's different about this Glock... For one, a lot of people don't know about the, the 17L. And you got the 17, you got the 34, and then the 17L is longer than the 34. I want to say it's a six inch barrel. Mm -hmm. So not only does I not only do I have the 17L, it's also ported and well it's comped as well. So I got the Severi um, comped barrel on there. It's got a red dot, um, it's custom Cerakoted, like an OD green. Mm -hmm. And then another thing too, it's not stempled. Yeah. But the grip has a very unique grip. Yeah, because I it, asked you why you didn't step with it. Yeah. And some people see it and they're like, man, that looks different. And then when they feel it's like, man, it feels pretty good. But it's an old school, I want to, I think it's a gen, I want to say gen three, but it's a, it's the RTF grip. Mm -hmm. And that's the Glock uh rough texture finished grip. And people that know Glocks and they see that grip, that's that's a nice grip. That's a grip that I probably I wouldn't stipple it because yeah. it just it just works, and I threw a little magwell on there. But I think for guns, that is probably that's probably one of my most interesting setups. And the thing that's crazy about the 17L is when I first got the gun, man, I was super excited about it. I took it to the range, and I shot it, and it shot weird. Yeah. And it shot weird. And it shot weird, and it, I go a lot, kind of pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I bought the gun, <coughs> I took it straight down to my gunsmith. I said, hey, man. I want a red dot on there. I need you to mill the slide, right? So he was like, okay, I'm going to mill the slide. He's like, you want to Cerakote it? And I was like, uh, you can just Cerakote it black. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you sure you want black? I was like, I don't, I don't want to pay for a color. That's what I told him. And right. he was like, I'm going to Cerakote it anyway, so 
whatever color you pick, as long as it ain't no crazy color, you know, I'll just serve code it for free because I mean, I got to redo it anyway. So I was like, you know, just pick a color, right? So he knew I was in the army. So when I go to pick it up, he circled it OD green. And nice. I was like, man, that thing looks dope, right? Yeah. So like I said, I get the gun, brand new, don't even shoot it, take it straight to the gunsmith. I get it dang on, um, I get the slide mill to get Cerakoted, and he did like some custom reverse front serrations on it. I go to range and shoot it, and I, I don't like it, man. What? I don't like it. Like the gun just, he just recoil funny. The, the 17L just recoil funny, man. And I thought it was me. And at the time, I had a couple of my buddies shoot. They was like, man, that feels funny. I said, I know, man. And then I literally had that gun, and it just, it just sat away for, I said, probably like five years, man. I just man. wasn't shooting it. So then I met you. We talked about building guns. And I don't know if you found Safiri Precision or I found them. You but found them. We was talking about it. So one day I'm on their website, and a barrel pops up. And I'm like, hey, that barrel looks long little the mug, right? <laughs> And I'm looking at it, it's for the 17L. And I was like, hmm, price is decent, let me get it. Mm. When, I put that, that, when I put that ported barrel in the 17L, completely changed the gun. Damn. The gun is an absolute beast now, and it just, it just runs. Yeah. It just, I love the gun now. I love the gun now. It is a, it's a very long gun, and it looks weird, right? Because yeah, sometimes people see it, they're like, what is that? It kind of reminds me, I don't know if you remember like the old Batman scene where the penguin takes out that long yeah, yeah. gun. <laughs> that's, that's what people be thinking about when they see that gun. But, um, but yeah, man, the 17L, I'd say that's probably one of my more or most interesting guns I got. It's pretty, it's pretty dope. It's clean, simple, and it freaking runs, man. It okay. runs, man. So, man, I think that's about, man, I think that about wraps it up. I'm looking at the time. We got to be apart by like maybe like 35 minutes or yeah, something like that. Yeah, we're up there, man. <laughs> it's pretty long. And I didn't even know how long it was going to run. So I figured like, hey, man, we talk guns. Let's, let's just put something on camera and see what it is, yeah. man. But that is the episode of Gun Talk, man. If you want to see more from my guy, Ken, man, let me know. We'll jump back on here and we'll have another conversation. What is your most interesting gun? Or if there's a gun topic that you want to hear us talk about, let me know and drop it in the comments. And that's all I got for y'all. We're, we are out. Peace. <laughs> Man.